I'm not good in the camera. I'm seeing in the computer. Um, yeah, but it come out. Um, yeah, so it's like a three minute lag. I guess they they want to make sure that people um we, that we are able to get censored. I don't know if you have seen the black channel lately. It's like whole like five minutes on mute all that censorship yeah you can see it more or less and it said over there the way to teach america that black lives matter is to teach it to teach it to each other first that was your reverend al sharpton of course, like you saw, he got the whole the whole front line. I mean, I, I didn't buy that garbage. I don't care for it. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. He he is over here now. This is why I, I, I was on Twitter. He he was over here saying, "Oh, Wednesday, um, I'm gonna be a a given deliver eulogy." at the funeral for uh, the late Brandon he Hendrix Ellison. Brandon Hendrix hyphenated Ellison. I don't know, I guess he was married. It's strange that men are taking, um, are taking the wife's last name that's the backwards society we live in. We just, whatever the whites do, we have to, we gotta copy it. And you know, that shit is going on in Mexico, say I'm Mexican, so I'm not gonna read his garbage. I already had enough for that headline. The front page that he made in the, you know, anyway, so. And of course, he gotta put in a commercial for the, so he can keep getting grants. You say about National Action Network. It's like they don't miss a second, you know, to brand themselves. You know, just like I'm just worried about um, this becoming a trend. Like I say, I'm so glad that we don't have iconic civil rights uh, movement leaders in you know in the Mexican American community. I mean, otherwise you'll be probably hearing in the news. You know, we will be probably making the the cover of newspapers. You know, talking infuriating statements like the one I just read to you. And here you go, the National Action Network had to advertise it. He got a gig. Uh, the gigs had slowed down for a little while for Rever Reverend Al Sharpton um, because people, there was like, okay, they knew, they knew about his record, really. I'm not even going to say... Um, checkerboard you know he had to put a, an advertisement everywhere he's given a eulogy he's given a eulogy wednesday so i mean that that i had already a rant this morning on my facebook i should upload it to to my page you know i'm like i try to live stream on my other channel but i moved something about the microphone and all I got was feedback. It's just devastated, you know, um, this very young gentleman, uh, Mr. Brandon Hendrix Ellison, got shot um, days after his graduation. I haven't really done research on that. I must say it's just, that alone is devastating. I don't need to, um, 
as a matter of fact, I was reading, I, I, you know, I went to say, I, I went to, to, I waited a little bit to come back home to make sure that the Amsterdam News was already out in the newsstands on 125th Street in Harlem. And yes, it was there. And um, the coverage of um, this past week, um, it's not very, you know, very different than the rest of the media, which I was hoping they will like, their coverage include the statistics, numbers, you know, solid data, but it didn't. This is so devastating. So, Reverend Al Sharpton thought that would be a good opportunity to um, You know, um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like I said, you know, anybody else who would say that, uh, you know, right after your son died or got killed, the last thing you want to hear is like, well, you know, we got to teach others that Black Lives Matter first. So this is typical, um, you know, how aboutism. How aboutism is is just um, textbook, textbook, you know, crackery, coonery. Um, anytime, you know, it just made it impossible to have, you know, any, any like, conversation without, you know, how about this? But but how about you know? I mean, African Americans you know, are not perfect. And it was like, I mean, I'm just very tired uh, about that. I can only imagine what our African-American brothers and sisters must be going to that you cannot even open your mouth with without this how about ism, you know, popping out, you know, everywhere. I mean, like, actually, you know, at the day of his eulogy, you, you you gotta you gotta use that to um, um, you know never I don't want notifications from this garbage teach it to each other first at the funeral for teen shot by stray bullet the Reverend Al Sharpton puts put it put spin on Black Lives Matter message and that's supposed to be revolutionary. I don't know. That's been my dream for a few years now that, you know, I wake up and to learn that African Americans have taken out the trash. And it's just not. I mean, if I was African American, I would be like demanding to go right now and protest the daily news for being such an opportunistic infection you know taking advantage of um, every every opportunity you know to brand himself to get headlines he knew he had to go you know be very very controversial in order for him to get the front page of the newspapers you know there was only that newspaper the the other newspapers was gone already you know when I, I went to buy a bagel and that's what they had right at the front desk I was like I was like just waiting for my bagel I was like what what it's just like and, and that message is not new not not revolutionary as they want to make it sound i mean i know i heard it a million times um that was the first thing sanera um posted when we learned about um this this young baby this little baby uh Dav Davel garner jr 
um, this is just very, very horrific. But um, let me tell you that um, that's the way things are in, 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 um, in, especially in New York City. I live in New York City. I've been here since 1992. So I know there's, uh, the, especially with the NYPD, I noticed this pattern that when they need funding, uh, they have to make these threats uh, that, you know, oh, you know, the, 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 the boogeyman, it's just like whatever, you know. I mean, we saw it, right, uh, you know, right after 9-11. They demanded to get their funding you know, and, you know, just by pure uh, fear mongering, saying if we don't get the funding, if we don't get like whatever, there's gonna be another 9-11. So sure enough, you know, I mean, they get anything they want. They just like, you know, all they have to do is like, bitch better get my money. And next thing you know, uh, I mean, like, their, their funding keep growing and growing. Uh, they just opened a precinct, another precinct last year. They're constantly opening precincts. Uh, they're always hiring. Like, you know, like it's, I, I don't know what they're getting ready for. Uh, this was last week's cover. Uh, am I right? Yeah, July 9th to July 15, 2020 edition of the Amsterdam News. They are so disappointed on the Amsterdam News. It's become kind of like a feminist uh, newspaper, and it's sad because I'm t we're talking about more than 110 years of glorious history of the Amsterdam News here in New York City. This is like my Bible, in, you know, or at least it used to be, and, and now it's just like they always have like gay flags and all this stuff, you know, just like. I guess they're not privately funded because if they was privately funded, you can do whatever you want, right? But I don't know. So I read this article because I was gonna show it. I was, I've been meaning to do a video for a while because uh, <clears throat> it just don't add up. Like I say, we've been having all these, um, you know, it's for more than a week every day this front page covers of uh, gun 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 violence i hate this lang language gone gone to me they sound the same let me try again gun violence just look at this headline you know i mean i haven't even there was another one uh, i wanted to show you and i cannot find it right now um it was the day before this one uh, but this one say as shootings keep soaring leaders seek healing <clears throat> and revamped and a revamped nypd and this came out on thursday july 9 2020 that's exactly a week ago Today is Thursday, July 16, 2020. So, I mean, like, it's BS. It is BS, and I'm going to tell you um, um, why it is such a BS. Because, I mean, like, as as you read this this um, edition, last week's edition of the Answer the News, you find the same spike on gun violence in all, I don't know, many states, many states. So it is not because, you know, we are attempting to defund the NYPD and, and uh, you know, and because we want them to release the records of each and every one of these cops, you know. Um, I mean, like I can say, I, I, I tweeted specifically to Latisha James and say, like, we need to see each and every one of these pigs' records. Of course, I didn't say that to her. Uh, um, but uh, because this, this should be outstanding citizens, the ones that, you know, pretend to serve us, 
I mean, like, especially on the on the role of being a police. What is all that? Oh, I don't know. Something pop up. I don't know these are commentaries, but then they're gone. So, wait a minute. Where's the article? <laughs> now I'm like, all of a sudden I'm drained, you know, because I've been getting so angry. And when I get angry, I get drained. Okay, I sold. Oh, this is the article, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna tell you the NYPD, the, I'm talking, I'm going back again to the July 9th issue of the Amsterdam News. The NYPD reported 45 shootings, leaving 64 people wounded and 11 people dead over the 4th of July weekend. The shootings are are a continuation of the rise of shootings that occurred in June. How do they link that? I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't know. Um, a 130% increase in shootings last month compared to June 2019. And this is what disappoints me about the answer to the news that, you know, there's no nuances, there's no contextualization. Uh, and we should not be um, using these numbers. <clears throat> First of all, I mean, this, this is something that every issue of the Amsterdam News, they should be starting the, their articles uh, with saying that we are the largest uh, city, you know, in the United States. And, and you know, and what is, what is this represent, you know, per capita? which is a very, very, very different, right? We're talking about, you know, per capita versus like just saying, oh, you know, there was all these shootings. No, it is not the same thing. It is not the same thing as to say shooting because it's like, we have like Vermont, <laughs> you know, and over there, yeah, if there was this amount of shootings, I mean, come on, you know, I have this problem here in my building. I've been here since 1994 and we just got a white, um, secretary representing Metro Management in, in charge over here. What is all this? Oh, it says somebody liberal cities, democratic cities. I mean, I mean, tomato, tomato. I mean, I feel like both parties are the same. I feel like um, the Democrats, they contribute uh, for Trump to become a superstar. Uh, to be become this white uh, savior, uh, and that is no accident. And they, it's control of position. So, <clears throat> I mean, I mean, just just the fact that every election, we can either vote for white, <clears throat> or we can vote for white. And eventually we get a black token, right? Or not even. We get a biracial mulatto like President Obama that obviously his alliance was not with uh, his own father's uh, community or anything because even Africa, he screwed over Africa. And that's what he was put on uh, in the White House for eight years to recolonize the African continent. Why? Because it's the richest continent in the whole world. <clears throat> and we don't like to, to make deals. We like to take it all. We don't do fractions, right? America just go like pff, all or nothing. You know, which by the way, uh, <clears throat> as I speak, the United States government, it's, it's been uh, attacking literally Venezuela. You know, uh, yesterday, they, they are, they are um, having all these ships at the border of their, their, uh, their water, in their national waters. And, and it's constant, constant provocation. Without, I haven't seen a single American complain against this br brutal imper imperialism. This is Neanderthal behavior. This is pure and typical Neanderthal behavior that you cannot, Venezuela have stated a million times. Yes, we have the largest reserves of oil in the entire world, and we are eager 
to make deals and give you a great price so you can have our oil, you know, at a great price. The United States is not interested in that. Ever, ever. And I don't know how you all Americans with the three Ks sleep at night. It's just beyond. So uh, then we go like, like I said, this is a national um, thing, a spike, mysterious spikes of gun violence that, you know, okay, so we have, you know, public advocate, you know, more like the devil's advocate, Jumani Williams, my heart hurts. I know that pain is shared around the city while it's not enough, I offer my prayers for peace and, and comfort to the victims, to, the, uh, to, to, the, to their families, to their communities impacted. Each public advocate, which is a kind of like a BS position, which is supposed to be the vice uh, mayor, in case of uh, the mayor, something happened to the mayor, but never do, never do happen that. So it's worse. You know, before uh, it was Latisha James who had this job, zero. And they call themselves the public advocate. No, the, the corporate advocate, that's who they are. Um, mm -mm. Oh my gosh, this wasn't it. I thought this was um, where they had uh, the numbers. They had about like five, six other states that have had a uh, spike in gun, gun violence. Okay, now I'm not gonna waste my time. I'm just gonna keep on going because I'm gonna be here the whole day. Uh, you know, Latisha James, who who was quick to set up a hotline to counseling, for doing counseling about Asians, because they was being bullied, you know, because they was calling it the China virus. She hasn't done a single thing for her own people. Not a single thing specifically for her own people. But she was this quick to say, we have to set up a hotline to make sure, you know, these Chinese peoples and these Asians peoples, they they get taken care of because they're suffering, they're struggling because people are yelling at them. That is their fault about this virus, these poor people. How are you gonna compare somebody being yelled at versus the African-American struggle, which every day are being executed in their own homes, in the street? Everywhere, everywhere. Now, now it's that's a hate crime, and being targeted by the police and 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 corporations and 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 financial institutions that refuse to give you loans to start a business. Meanwhile, if it's an immigrant, they get the loan. But is there foundational African Americans? No, 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 no. In the media, what do you see? You see children of immigrants like Joan Reed, like Roland Martin, like all these people. Um, you know, of course they don't talk about this. Why would we talk about this? Whites are perfect. Whites are perfect. Imagine this bougie, bougie this bougie gymnasium. It was like a four-story gymnasium in Brooklyn, one of the posh neighborhoods. Just crumble because whites are so corrupted they are putting very low quality materials so i give you the heads up you know find out who built uh, the apartment complex where you live at because that might happen to you no headlines no nothing you know i mean i mean i tried to look for the for that this rag um i don't want to get to, to this until the end so brace yourself. This is a cover of the Amsterdam News. It is very... Oh.
this is why Sanera uh, jump out and say, you know, oh, we are awful. We are awful. You know, we shot a one-year-old baby. And I just read this article in the in the train in 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 the bus because uh, you know you, you, on the train in the bus because you know I like I took the long way home, you know because you know I for somehow didn't feel like coming home. To what? <laughs> to my kitty cat, you know. I I love him so much, but you know you know I gotta make the best out of the hot days. If I don't go out in the hot day, I get severe depression in the winter or lack of sun. Um, I don't know how people can live in, I mean, we don't. Just look at, just look at all the madness that's going on in this country. So, you know, very, very disturbing article from the Amsterdam News uh, was written by Cyril, Cyril Josh Baker, which is the Amsterdam News staff which is Amsterdam News staff, I'm sorry, and Nayaba Arinde, uh, who is the editor of the Amsterdam News. This is why it's so disturbing. Like, you go like, how can this be? How can you not start an article on gun violence and don't start publishing, you know, making reference to the countless studies empirical studies linking poverty to violence to violence i'm sorry how to pronounce the v how can you not you are the amsterdam news i'm sorry i mean i you, you, you know we see this from you know all the the other papers the white media the white propaganda machine we see that you know like they don't care to contextualize, to, to say like, oh, you know, this, this, and that. I want to see an article when, when they say, you know, what we are seeing is, is it's just what we've been warned for decades about poverty, about uh, the very, very uh, botched uh, distribution of wealth, torturing or our youth specifically our youth, that they get bombarded by all these images of luxury and all of these celebrities and all that stuff. And, you know, they go like, you know, I want to have that. I think, they look, they look so happy in their, in their luxury vehicles. They look so happy and, you know, they want to be like them. Why do you think I'm in, in this country? Because I was a stupid victim of uh, white propaganda, you know, their capitalism saying that, you know, <laughs> this country is a shit, everything is great over here, and, you know, more than 30 years later, it's just a scam. So they actually started their article citing this guy, Marquez Claxton. I think it's pronounced Marquis. Claxton. So this he is uh, a retired NYPD detective. And wait for it, wait for it. And he is also the founder of Black Law Enforcement Alliance. Black Law Enforcement Alliance. What is Black Law? Anybody can tell me Black Law. I mean, like we're talking about, you, you know, African-Americans who was just actually liberated from chattel slavery. And, you know, and Jim Crow, where, you know, they lost, you know, more than half of their family to mass incarceration and and now we go into a, you know more mass incarceration of, of, of black and uh, african americans you know just it, it is it is just like this is how you start an article on gun violence 
as a leading black media, I mean, okay. So he said, uh, this Marquis Claxon character said, uh, the cowards have seized control of the streets. Too often they are given cover because of a phony alleged street code. These criminals have focused their range, their, their rage inward and now terrorize our family and neighbors, even our babies. I want my money back. I'm sorry, Amsterdam News. I can read this anywhere. I don't, I don't need a, a newspaper that give a microphone to, to these KKK characters. I mean, once upon a time, one of the laws of the street was that babies, elders, women, and children in general were off limits. A street regulation punishment, a street regulate, regulation punishable. But gun violence is on the rise. While the nightly all night fireworks have stopped, they have been replaced with deadly drive-bys and random shootings. Uh, and then they proceed to give straight up NYPD the microphone the platform. But let me finish telling you that the, the, this character is like, I'm like, okay, where are you at? This <laughs> thing. Oh my God, it was right here. Um, what happens at, at these parties is that people see, people see people they have beef with. Oh no, no, that, that's not it, like, that's not it. Okay, Claxon is the founder, like I said, of Black Law Enforcement Alliance. And he told the Amsterdam News, those who fully reject professional policing and believe that internal com community systems can adequately secure us must must show and prove if we if we fail to bring those responsible to justice we are lying to ourselves and coddling terrorists who thrive off uh, our fear we have to expand the use of non-traditional anti-balance strategies and confront head-on the purveyors of this senseless violence. This is the retired NYPD detective. Uh, that what basically he's saying is just, it's your fault because you are against the NYPD. And this is what happened. So we're talking about pure fear mongering that I was just tell, talking about. You know, and this is who the Amsterdam News, um, you know, prioritize. I mean, this is right here. This is right here. With literally the second paragraph. That's when they give the paragraph, the, the microphone to this character. And then, like I say, they give it to the NYPD, you know, because, you know, and, and, and you think, that baby got shot intentionally. What sick head, you know, I mean, you know, obviously it, 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 it was not intended for the baby, come on. There was three other people who, who, who got randomly shot. These mysterious drive-bys we've seen in Chicago, Detroit, um, uh, Philadelphia, uh, you know, all these uh, African-American cities, and, and they are never found. They are never found. We have cameras everywhere. And these drive-bys, you know, last summer we have a, a shooting, just random shooting in Crown Heights. They had just finished this weekend festival, you know, with the, you know, it's called the 
you know, when the old neighbors, they come back from, you know, that they moved out at one point. Home, homecoming, I think it's called something uh, li like that. So it was the last night and, and, it, and it was like 10 p.m. And, and they were and they were speaking up the, the 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 sound system and the platforms and stuff, and all of a sudden somebody just went there and started shooting. You know, and it, and it was very poor lighting, and and uh, to this day I think they just frame up like two kids or something. I mean, like <clears throat> with no proof. There's no, there's no proof. They just, they just decided to like, okay, let's, let's not, let's not make it seem like, like, you know, uh, we, we're not doing our job. We gotta, we gotta ask, you know, like, you know, like four years ago, they, when they shot, um, you know, officer, uh, uh, familia, a Dominican woman, a very voluptuous Dominican woman, which I'm sure it was an inside job. It was the NYPD. Uh, she was probably sleeping around or something and they got somebody got their feelings hurt and she was in in, in, the, in the police car and somebody went there and shot shot her right there on, on 183rd what was yeah 183rd and, and close to Grand Concourse between Jerome you know and like I think it was Morris uh, I, I don't know so uh, last year they had a parade uh, for detective, I think Familia, that, that was her name and everything. This time, you know, I I pass by and I see there was flowers on the floor uh, behind the tree, you know, <laughs> in the sidewalk, but it was like behind the tree and some candles, leftover candles. I go like, let me see, oh, there was a shooting Oh, so they had a picture. I think I, I took a picture. I don't know. I don't know where it's at. And, you know, I had to take it the next time because I didn't want to be so obvious. I just took a look. I didn't want to, you know, but the, 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 the second time I passed by, I, I they was already dismantled. The picture was there, but it looked like all nothing. So if blue lives matter, they would have had already like a shrine like they had last year or was it two years ago i don't even remember um they couldn't care less they couldn't care less they say blue lives matter but i'm telling you the picture was on the floor facing the street got a couple of candles some flowers cheap flowers so you want to tell me that they really care about each other not when it's black not when it's brown uh-uh and, and it's just a show. They put on a show. Come on. Come on. But it's just like, you know, I didn't get to live to be 55 years old just for being stupid, you know? So. Where was this at? Or was it, was it here when I was, um... oh yeah. The NYPD reports Garner was in his stroller outside Raymond Bush playground in bed -Stuy during a family barbecue when two men walked up to the crowd and opened fire. So, I mean, two men. You know, that that's that's all we get. You know, I mean, I, I, I didn't see it. I mean, I... I read this a couple of times and, and I couldn't find. The police told the Amsterdam News that on Sunday at approximately 11.30 p.m. they were called to 464 Madison Street in, Bed, in, in Bedford Stuyvesant. Upon arrival, police encountered a 36-year-old man, ma male, they put here, uh, who was shot in the leg. EMS also re responded to it, to the scene and removed the 36 year old and, and I'm sorry and yeah and removed that's a awkward word removed the 36 year old to Kings County Hospital in stable condition prior to police arrival a one year old male uh, a, a gunshot wound to the abdomen 
and a 35 year old male with a gunshot wound to the groin were taken to infant medical center by private means private means so i mean the story should be like you know why there's no ambulance in bedsty this happened all the time and crown heights flatbush i mean shameful it is it is beyond shameful um the one-year-old male was subsequently moved to Maimonides Medical Center where he was pronounced deceased. Can you imagine? I mean, like, so, I mean, the story is why this interfaith medical center did not have, you know, anything for this baby, you know? that you know had to be transported why because in black neighborhoods there's no there's no clinics much less hospitals you know i mean they have band-aids they have like flu shots of course all the vaccines that you want with mercury and all these poisons Police also determined that 27-year-old male walked into Woodhall Hospital with a gunshot wound to one of his uncles. Then there are no arrests at the time and the investigation is ongoing. The three adults are expected to, to recover. The community just getting worse and worse. That's what uh, the grandfather, uh, uh, you know, da Davnell Garner, I mean, I'm sorry, Davell Garner Sr. said. So over here we have uh, more, more um, information. Uh, the, the same information about percentages and stuff that they don't say nothing in a in a very you know in a large city like like us like New York City among the the victims is 17 year old Lamar Gibson who was shot during a dispute uh, at George Washington houses in East Harlem Last weekend, the city saw shootings up 277% compared to the same week from last year. You see, 277%. What did I tell you? That's just a computer who gave him this information. There's no, um, like I said, there's no contextualization, nothing. Activist Bo Bomani Mayasa told the answer the news when you are living in, in a society in which a baby can be targeted, shot and killed, you are living in, in, in a society that will not survive. The co-founder of United Front African Insurrection M Music or Music as asserted the the only thing that can save our race from its own destruction is the presence of black manhood its own destruction it is own destruction how many times we seen the united states government have actually hired uh people in our own communities like i say i'm mexican uh, two years ago, on July 1st, 2018, we went out and voted. Uh, we, for the first time in 70 years, we elected our first president in Mexico. And because why? Because the other presidents 
was working for the United States government. And the proof, I have the proof. You can look at uh, the recently, you know, just it's been, what, like three years, they, they released some more documents from the assassination of JFK. And that's where it state that uh, four presidents, four Mexican presidents was directly working for the CIA. This is huge. I mean, I'm talking about, you know, and this happened everywhere. We see it in Haiti. We see it in the Dominican Republic. Well, they just elected a new president. We'll see if it's he's actually, you know, the real deal or, or he's going to sell out. You know, they all start really good. And then, and then, you know, like they start winking at the United States. You know, what do you want me to do, master? What do you want me to do? I'm here. And, you know, once they get to the prize, so you're gonna tell me that you're gonna believe that that these two men who pull out and, and shot uh, at, at people we don't we don't have any details you know actually a newspaper like Amsterdam News apparently didn't go in the field and ask the people in that building in, in the playground it don't it don't seem that way it seemed like it's just a generic you know article. Of course, they gotta give a plug to um, to the mayor, and he's African American, ex lesbian wife, uh, Miss Charlene McRae, Cray Cray. Uh, you know because you know they 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 come out with these occupy the corners, occupy the corners. First of all, we are not even allowed to be in the street no more. I don't know what they're talking about with the with their BS. I mean, I'm not talking about Corona or anything. I'm just talking about in general, you know, it's like immediately anybody hanging out in, in the street. I mean, like, I mean, it still happened, but, but, you know, for people to organize and, and police our own communities, it's always, always like, oh, you know, but you're not going to do it right. But you're like, you know, and they always, always end up uh, sabotaging uh, community policing. That's what my experience in, in the past 28 years that I've been here in New York City. So um, then we have um, Seku. Who was Seku? There's so many characters. There's a million characters in this article. This is about how you know this is such a lousy article. When you have a thousand characters and they are not like they go jump back and forth like if it was like oh you know like you're talking about you know um very well known people or something you know so i forgot who seku was seku 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 is it a new character they introduce where where they introduce <laughs> i mean like it's just, it's just like it's like a riddle like you know Okay, I'm just gonna continue. Okay, Seku said that some of the violence is blamed on conflict among people and then seeing each other at outdoor social gatherings like block parties, picnics, uh, oh, I hate to say the word, uh, barbecues. Many use, many are using violence and settle the score leaving deadly results. Yeah, there's no research, there's no em empirical data, nothing. It just, uh, he said it. Uh, what happens at these parties is that people see people they have beef with. Seku said, all of these people are becoming very visible after spending long periods of time in prison. People have all beefs uh, that were never mediated and people who are being released with no oversight. But there are a whole host of other things, even some violence that may have been quarantined or incubated 
a new loose it, it is now loose so to speak who was it cool come on did I actually it could have been on the first page Oh, was it that activist? Who is Seku? Oh, here, here it is, here it is. Let me, let me unders underscore it because uh, all these letters are on top of, uh, oh yeah. Yeah, I had already told you about her. Yeah, I'm sorry. It, it was like in an interview with uh, Amsterdam News, SCR CEO and founder, Lisha Seku said her organization have been able to keep violence down and the and the rise in in shooting in is heartbreaking and SCR stand for street corner resources sound just another nonprofit and now they're taking the credit oh we have done such a great job okay Okay, I'm still yet to, to find one of these nonprofits that actually are, you know, but. Mm -mm. Okay, so now we have uh, Mr. Leader, Noel Leader or Noel Ladder, I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name. I think I saw him speak once. He's a retiring YPD. Um, and wow, he, he, I mean, that was in my other channel that they took him out. But I think he even wrote a book. I mean, like, you know, it's a miracle that he's still alive. I, I figured they, they have to leave some alive to make it sure like, you know, oh, you, you know, there's dissent allowed. You know, so retired NYPD officer Noel Lader or Noel Leader posed a question on social media. Am I the only one suspecting of this increase in shootings at this particular time? Uh, BLM protests calls for defunding of the police CJ reform, bail reform, officer being, being, officers being arrested, bunch of question marks. How many of these shootings resulted in an arrest? And what percentage of these shootings are random with no connection to the victim? And tons of questions marks. And nobody care about that. This is what something I've been, I've been telling everybody you know, you know, I wish I, how can I find those? They are like latex masks that you put on uh, the whole face and everything. And very realistic. At night, uh, you know, make anybody, anybody look like African-American. They have the gloves too. So all you got to do is just put on a hat or a hoodie and, and, you will say and say, yeah, I saw an African-American, you know, robbing, you know, breaking stuff. And it turned out it's white people. And, you know, I keep always saying why it is not illegal or control. It should be like a controlled substance. Oh, you're buying a suit or you're manufacturing this. Yeah, I want to know who you sold this to. And why you sold this too? Is it for? I mean, why is it that anybody have to? to I mean, these crackers are addicted to this to wearing blackface for reasons I'm not aware of. But but that's something that you know. So don't come to me telling me anything and shame on you, Sanera, for for jumping the gun and making that video. I did not even click on that video. Because if I did, I would curse you out. You know, I mean, like, I'm like, immediately, immediately, you have to blame your own people. That said a lot about how sick in the head you are. Nobody else do it. Nobody else do it. The conversation like that, you know, when you seen, uh, you know, whites, 
go saying like, you know what, maybe, maybe, you know, it, you know, we have to look at our, our problems, you know, as our own doing. Never, never. But you gotta have all these characters, you know, spokespeoples for the African American society in the United States make these outrageous statements. There is no true justice without safety, no safety without justice, said Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams. That's like, gosh, why they even bother to, to just these blank statements, you know? Last week throughout the city, there was 74 gun incidents what is a gun incident? Why they keep making up? You know, I mean, was it somebody was caught with a gun? Oh, gun incident. Let's report it. I mean, they think we all stupid. I'm not stupid. I can see this reporting is awful. Resulting in one 101 shooting victims. The NYPD, and mind you, that was the 4th of July week. And of course, they have like, you know, I mean, you are selling alcohol left and right for the 4th of July, and you expect people that's not going to be misbehaving. The NYPD said that as of July 5th, shootings incidents have risen by 54%. Of course, they have to use the 4th of July. You know, some community state, no, state, oh my gosh, this English is so horrible language. Uh, some community stakeholders determine that while there is the basic criminality at play, there is also crippling poverty, unemployment, institutional, institutionalized racism, and lack of resources. This is where it is at the very end of the two-page article. Now, now you you want to like say, you know, oh, you know what? You know, we live in the third dimension and, you know, it's all about cause and effect, right? Uh, the laws of physics, you know, for every action, there's a reaction for every, you know. <sighs> oh, no. When it comes to African-Americans, it's like, you know, why bother? You just, you just. They are just who they are, and that's it. There's no hope. And you allow this? I mean, like... But, you know, they close, finally. They give the microphone to Kevin Barron, a writer and activist. And he stated, every time there is violence in our community, some politicians, law enforcement officials, and media use the opportunity to blame it on bail, on, on bail reform, I'm sorry, and defunding the police, when in actuality, the root of the problem is lack of employment opportunities, quality education, recreation centers, and in general, lack of investment in our communities, which will direct direct resources, which which will direct resources to eradicate poverty. I don't know what it's. I think it's a typo. 
because I know I'm not good at English, but you know, that was like, don't get me wrong. There will always be people who do dumb shit, but let's not lose focus on the root causes of the problem. This was the participation they allowed him. I want you to see how biased this is. Could have started this article with this just this little paragraph. Just feel like a slap in the face to read this article. Yeah, I mean, I just made some quick note over here. You know, where are the statistics? You know, per capita. And how, why don't we talk about how, since we passed the bail reform, even before we were trying to pass bail reform, which we have thousands and thousands of New Yorkers in jail because they cannot afford to pay pay bail, or because they don't even know they can post bail. There's been dramatic cases of African Americans who didn't know if they had only paid $50, they would have been home months ago or years ago. That's why it was important to pass the bail reform. And from the moment it was like demonized it, every, everybody, we got nobody here. We don't have uh, a black channel in New York City. We don't have uh, Professor Black Truth in New York City. You know, nobody care about New York City, what's going on. You know, I've been trying to like, you know, get the attention of, you know, I mean, all we got is Sean King, you know, and Al Sharpton, all these leeches that I don't know what else to do. I left black Twitter. I I stopped watching television like 12 years ago. Uh, like, you know, I just avoid seeing the news because everything is so biased and destructive and, and nobody said it like enough is enough. Let's go start a protest against these tabloids, these filthy rags that continue to to tarnish our reputation of, of our African-American brothers and sisters. As I was crossing, I was on the 12 bus crossing to Manhattan. Start crying in front of everybody. <laughs> forty one years, more than four decades in prison. A true hero, rise in power, Mr. Delbert Africa. I haven't even read. I didn't know. He just came out of jail. He just came out. He just came out of jail. The crackers still free, terrorizing the whole world. not fair. I'm gonna last, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish with this horrific news.
from more crackers in the streets protesting for NYPD. There's no outrage, there's no nothing. This is just so horrific. There was about five protests throughout the city. This week, this past weekend alone, in white neighborhoods, of course, they came out, you know, to defend the, the Blue Lives Mafia. So my hopes that keeping this civil war, um, <clears throat> keeping the civil war, um, you know, to the white, whitest states like Oregon, Seattle, you know, the civil war look like it's gonna be also New York State because already up upstate you know once you get out of New York City everything is uh, Cuckoo's Clan territory weekend of protests and clashes between pro cop and Black Lives Matter marchers And I warned you, I warned you, even even before 2016, I knew this shit was escalating. You know, I kept saying, whites are escalating very fast. Nothing. There's no breaking point. There's no deal breakers when it comes to whites. We allow them to be out of control, stay out of control. and be ratchet as hell. <clears throat> and you have to be a serious, a serious fascist to come out and do this in New York City. Every day the NYPD get busted You know, that is trash. He was on the sofa and he just went like, and he threw it out on the floor. Even my cat know these newspapers are filth. I haven't read it. My head is being chopped off, I think. <laughs> Not literally, <laughs> you know. But you know what I mean? And I hate to point out the ceiling. I don't like broadcasting with my ceiling. Unless, you know, flowers on my ceiling. My ceiling is just white. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to leave it like down. That's one. One little move. And the whole frame is gone. Okay, now you can see my head. Okay, pre-police demonstrators, pre, pro, pro-police brutality, that should have been, pro-police brutality demonstrators made their voices heard in Brooklyn and Queens this week, this past week, <clears throat> and not without loud clashes with co counter protesters that brought out overtones of ugliness ugliness you know i think the devil the devil is ugly crackers are a monstrosity 
Sunday saw a tense clash at Crocheon, 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 I don't even know, Crocheon Park in Bayside, Queens, where members of, of the black and blue group supporting NYPD amidst the out ongoing protests following the murder of George, George Floyd in Minneapolis <clears throat> PD custody in Minneapolis PD custody in late May clashed with members of you know African American society as the rally began to take shape. I just hate that every credit is Black Lives Matter. Everything is Black Lives Matter. You know, these carpetbaggers. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, and they're so corrupt. I mean, like, and gay, you know, and really, I mean, I think I even posted a video on my ch on my channel, you know, about, about uh, no, I haven't posted. There was this lady who, who was like, okay, let me show you how they they don't allow heterosexual African American men. And and she read and she showed it the website. It's all about queer whatever that is, queer shit, bullshit, whatever. So it was long after that the two the two groups <clears throat> clash elsewhere with nothing in their way. The pro police group brandishing, whatever that is, altered American flags with a thin blue line, symbolizing <clears throat> that cops are what is keeping the United States from descending into chaos along with that orange piece of shit. They have in their signs, this was signs. While members of the NYPD attempted to ease tensions. Oh, superheroes. It included <clears throat> African American protesters claiming that a pro police rally insulted a supporter of BLM. Why even bother wasting your time and energy on these people? Like, I mean, that's something I refuse to do. All that's already been, we passed already all these back and forth and a long time ago. I was the honorable Malcolm X. He got all the patience in the world, world to debate him and I don't, I don't, I mean like. <clears throat> Another black and blue march was set up in Diker Heights <clears throat> and Bay Ridge, Brooklyn on Sunday night, a day after being involved in a march that included clashes with counter protesters and overtones of ugliness that follow, <clears throat> that follow a July 11 rally in Brooklyn came together at 13th Avenue and 77th Street and went up to 86th Street. And I don't even know where the hell that is because I don't go to these white neighborhoods. <laughs> <It sounds like. clears throat> Several hundred residents carried signs in support of police officers in, in the <clears throat> prominently upper middle income neighborhood. Um, upper middle income neighborhood, which is mean wealthy as hell, you know. The demonstrators apparently came together loosely, no one, no one group taking credit for bringing the people there together. Meeting the group of uh, late Saturday, a trio of Democratic lawmakers represented the, representing the area condemned a faction of the protest, which was caught on video hurling racist, threatening, 
remarks at counter protesters in a clip circulating on social media, a man now wearing a mask could be told tell could be told telling a, a female protester to get raped. Another clip of uh, a female journalist wearing a police department issue press pass being assaulted with her camera, <clears throat> which a pro-police protester then smashed to the ground. Lovely people, you know, people. And, and, and I use that term very loosely because these are not people. These are the direct descendants of the survivors of the last ice age, and there's research to prove this. You know, th their DNA is totally destroyed. So they are not human beings. Let's just get that out of the way. <clears throat> this is why I don't debate people who are not human beings. I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Just look at their actions every day. You know the website, you know the NYPD have these websites <clears throat> where all they do is just uh, yell out, um, you, you know, I mean, write down obscenities uh you know about uh their own victims of uh police brutality do you know that i mean <clears throat> and my other channel that's why they took it down you know because they didn't, they didn't like that I, I made a video and it was like and you know i shared it around uh inbox you know you know african-american leaders and, and facebook and twitter and and everybody was like, "Well, you know, so how come you 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 wanna end police brutality, but you don't really invest time and effort to dismantle these websites that are so offensive?" I mean, that was the time when they assassinated uh, Miss Deborah Dabner. Downer. That's the surname. She was a petite, uh, five foot two African American lady. They <clears throat> shot her dead in her bedroom, in her bed. They went all the way to her bedroom to shot her. So spare me all these. And and this is just like, you know, random shit I can come out with, you know. I mean, you know, not mentioning that, you know, if you have a walkie-talkie and you interfere their signal, all you hear is obscenities, racial slurs, and were these and were that. Never repercussions. Never. Today in Diker Heights, there was an event built as support the NYPD march. I had no doubt that some showed up with that intent, but what I saw looked more like a Trump rally. That's all they gotta say. When it's like, you know, they condemn this violence, when they say like, we wanna make sure, we wanna guarantee justice for African Americans from these protesters, they're gonna have consequences from, call, from calling you the N-word and from, from treating you. Oh no, oh, but what about if you like to wear a small hat? If you are one of those small hats out there? Oh, if you say something that, I mean, they're not even Jews. They're Jewish, ish, they're Jewish. You know, they are the, 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 the hazards Casers, casers, you know, you know the, the, the brutal, barbaric uh, nomads that used to go and destroy Europe like three times <laughs> just for the fun of it. <clears throat> That's their direct descendants. You know, they converted to Judaism in the eighth century. I, I do research actually, <laughs> so not, not just, I'm not just a pretty face. So, like I said, this is the July, Monday, July 13, 2020. 
issue of the free newspaper, which is controlled by the New York Post. So it's filth, filth, you know, just every now and then I just, I just take a screenshot and put it on my Instagram or something. So people, they don't think I'm crazy because that's the first thing they're gonna say like, oh my God, it's like, imagine without the NYPD, come on. The NYPD have to follow orders. You know, <clears throat> they have to follow orders. So they don't really matter. They don't matter because, you know, you can waste your time, you can be like, oh, you know, this, this and that, you're wasting your time talking to, to these pigs because they only follow orders. We saw during the looting, how they were just watching because Mayor de Blasio told them to, you know, do nothing. Why? Because they already had insurance, right? That's why they went. That's why there was no action. We, we was ahead of the game for, for three months. We got the corona three months after China. <clears throat> you would think, oh shit, you know, we are prepared. We should be prepared. They got prepared. They put out all their stocks from Wall Street and they put it in, like they did all their movements, all their white businesses, they got insurances. They got two or three insurance policies against looting and riots and, and you know, whatever not. So there was actually no losses. There's no losses for, for whites because all they gotta do is just collect those insurances. As if, you know, I know African-Americans who have the same insurances and they cannot collect them. This is America. I don't know what the hell this is. You know, all tracking the corona. What is that supposed to be, you know? I mean, besides fear mongering. Is that supposed to be Kaposi sarcoma? What is it? And live updates. And like, who believed the government? I mean, like, you're an idiot if you believe anything come out from any any branch of the government maybe federal local whatever you know just anyway so i just did my part i don't expect anybody to to watch this or anything but i just washed my hands off as i've been doing for years for years you know and the proof is in the pudding right they didn't leave a single video from my YouTube channel. I'm talking about tens of thousands of videos uh, from protests that I was covering because I like to I like to cover a protest from the beginning to the end, all the speeches, everything. They took everything. I'm sure in ten years they're gonna feel like, well, there's no copyrights and they're gonna be using all that for their documentaries, their movies, who who knows for, for whatever they do. You know? Or they might be showing it in other countries, my videos, and making money from for, from that. That's how they market. Where do all these videos go to? This is theft. This is theft. This is nothing but theft. Oh, we have uh, oh, the red pill. It's gonna be a a live streaming, another ledge. The twins are so smart and and their brother too. I'm not sure. I'm just gonna give him a like. He's a brilliant young man. Um, that's it, you know, this is why I don't feel like making videos most of the time. I have to appreciate it when I, when I get moved to get in front of the camera. Because, you know, I don't. Oh wow, it's gonna be an hour and a half. And, <clears throat> I mean, I'm glad it's an hour and a half, so. 
because you know it's not for anybody it's not for everybody it's for the people who who really want to hear you know just what I see this is not the truth but I'm telling you what I see the way I see it and history is gonna prove me right or wrong yeah she's a Cuomo puppet that's that's what it is they say there was a spike of uh, gun violence in in Democrat Democrat cities so that alone what that tell you you know that that's like oh you want to be free like you know uh, professor black was saying you know we won we won African Americans won you know they had all these pigs that they caught uh, the swine flu or whatever they caught um, they're calling in sick and whatnot <clears throat> but of course they have to they have to say like oh without me you are nothing without me you cut my funding and I wash my hands off you why how you're supposed to be just a peon you're not the police commissioner you're not you know but they all talk to you like you know they are the shit you know uh, last night I was waiting to for a swipe over there at the Utica train station on the, on the the three and the four train and you know uh, there was some guy obviously with mental problems was yelling and and the cop you know some from from India he seemed to be from India he said oh you can go in you can go in open the door for me I said like I said no I don't do blue lives matter and, and, and the feminist cop pig that was with him because they're always in pairs, right? Uh, they were like, <laughs> it's like, come on, come on. It's, you're just as guilty. You are just as guilty. If you're in the NYPD, you are just as guilty. Unless you expose them, unless you rat them out. <clears throat> if, if it was true that it is just a few rotten apples, you know, we would have already been taken care of. But it's not. It is not. And they all get their hands soaked in blood. Yeah, liberal cities. That's what, that's what the, the comments was. So have a good night, everybody. And it's your life. You leave it the way you want it to leave, I guess. Oh, I'm trying to turn it off here. I'm like, I still think I'm only here. <clears throat> yeah, I should upload it in my other channel, too. Have a good night, everybody. And, oh, here's the X. I said...